Hi, my name's Nicholas, and I live on a 100-year-old wooden boat built in 1922. In today's video, we're gonna walk through an emergency haul out to perform a repair up forward by my bow after taking on thousands of gallons of water during a rough water crossing while I was supporting the race to Alaska from Port Townsend to Victoria and ended up having to call the Coast Guard for a vessel assist to help me pump out my boat before I realized the extent of the damage and what happened was. So let's start off later that evening where my friend Jay, one of the Race to Alaska volunteers, was only an hour behind me and volunteered to help dive on the boat to help me troubleshoot just what happened. The only thing I see is that sprung plank. Hey Pete. Good evening, Nicholas. Uh, this is this is Pete, my shipwright on the phone. So I couldn't really tell in that picture. The piece of sheathing is down below the waterline. Correct. Okay. And it was sprung off. Okay. I've uh, got it back in now. Okay. Am I good to start uh, knocking some of these two-inch uh, copper nails into this uh, sprung sheathing plank? Yeah, I'll allow it. <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> Thanks. I'll let you guys chat, and I'm gonna go underwater. Yeah, what's the problem? Who is that guy? Is he swinging a hammer underwater? Yeah. Impressive. Can you haul out in BC? My guess is it's, it's the stem seam right at right at or and or above the water line. Okay, so let's catch us up on what happened yesterday. We had a fabulous start to the race to Alaska. It was really fun to see all the boats leave the harbor and we stuck with the boats for the first few hours. So I was about three or four hours into my cruise yesterday. I run downstairs and saw what seemed like a fire hydrant of water shooting up to the ceiling, spraying all over the engine, the electronics, all my manual. I had a quick moment of like, oh shoot, something is seriously wrong. When I realized that the, it, the, there was enough water in the bilge that the flywheel was submerged about four inches, it was the flywheel that was shooting the water up into the engine room. Uh, so I immediately shut my engine off turn my pumps on and sort of the second wave of panic was okay there's way more water in this boat than I've ever seen and it came in faster than had a bilge pump failed or not the water shouldn't be this high so there's definitely a leak somewhere and I don't know where it is so I turned on all my pumps did a quick inspection of all my bilge ports didn't see anything and was just monitoring the situation for a few minutes in the meantime all my friends in the Race to Alaska, the support boats, we gave them a call, let them know of our situation, and asked them to come uh, stand by just in case you know there was something seriously wrong. And ultimately, I did call for a vessel assist to meet me where I was with some industrial pumps, throw the pumps in, and pump the bilge dry. So once the bilge was dry, we could not find the leak. We didn't know if it was the keel coolers, if there was a through hole that was pulled, a plank that was sprung, there was no evidence of water coming in the boat. So we made a prudent call to change course to Ganges. It turns out that once we were underway, while well, the water was coming through that seam and I could see uh, what the problem was. So we went to Ganges to hang out for the night and Jay met me to dive on the boat just to see if there was anything clear on the outside that we could see. Uh, at the time, I wasn't sure if I hit anything. That following morning, I went to the hardware store to pick up another uh, industrial sized pump just in case anything happened before I made my way across the Strait of Georgia to Vancouver where I was able to schedule a haul out. That afternoon I took the boat over to Whalers Cove which is a good starting point for an early morning crossing of the Strait of Georgia uh, where I had a good weather window to make it to Fraser River for my haul out. nothing is ever easy and I had another breakdown in Whaler Bay. Okay so after all of that mess with the water coming in and the engine spraying water everywhere, a lot of that salt got onto the engine itself. And there's a ton of salt buildup and corrosion now on all the uh, fittings and valves on the air start manifold. Well one of those valves ended up seizing up. I went ahead and cleaned it 
But then the gasket is now blown out. I'm gonna rip apart the valve, clean it, and then create a new gasket to stick back on. Here you can see where the blowout on the gasket happened. So here's the valve, I cleaned it up. Even though working on wooden boats can be really stressful at times, you're often doing so in a really beautiful place. Gasket material, ball peen hammer. Not too shabby. Adding a bit of Permatex to the gasket material just to improve the seal between the valve assembly and the head of the engine. I was able to reinstall the valve assembly and in no time had the engine up and running again for my trip up to Vancouver for the haul out. Here I am approaching uh, Vancouver, which is to the north. I'm entering up the Fraser River, making my way to Shelter Island. So we're just coming in uh, to Shelter Island, just north of Lion Island. And it's pretty shallow. Here they are, ready for me to haul out. So coming into Shelter Island on a big boat ended up being quite a tricky scenario. Uh, the tide was somewhat low and the current was going about a knot and a half, two knots. You can see me going sideways here as I maneuvered the boat around. So after my typical five or six point turn to maneuver the boat 180 degrees, here I am pointed down river and had to really consider that knot and a half current broadside to the boat as I came in uh, sideways to the travel lift. You can see a bit of a bump here from the sideways momentum that I had. Real quick, let me introduce you to the shipwright I found to help me out with the haul out. So he has a very efficient way of unloading his scaffolding with his pickup truck. He also gets right to work. After removing all the old ice sheathing, I'm using a scraper to strip away the tar that helps waterproof the planking underneath it. This tool is called a reefing hook and it is used to remove all the old oakum and cotton corking that lies between the planks and in this case the rabbit seam. All the old cotton and oakum corking that was in here has now turned to mud. So what I'm doing is I'm reefing it out and then uh, Eric is going to cork some new oakum back into the rabbit seam. Right here, this is called the rabbit seam. All the corking material has been completely rotted out and there's essentially, or it was like a muddy hole in the boat and I think that's where all the water uh, was coming in. Um, uh, this is the port side of the boat. And then similar situation on the starboard side where there was concrete that crumbled out and we think the ingress of the water was coming in actually on the port side of the boat making its way over to the starboard side of the Stemson which is a large piece of wood that's resting right behind these planks. We are encountering a lot of rotten planks which is expected. Uh, in the haul out last year uh, with Pete Stein we did uh, about 37 planks and 20 frames on the starboard side of the boat uh, which was in worse condition. The port side also needs a similar repair uh, now is not the time when I wanted to do that and so the plan here is to try and fasten these planks 
which are coming up a little bit into the frames behind it or drive a long fastener into the stemson just to keep those planks secure to the boat. All right, it is getting towards the end of day one and we did a good amount of work. I didn't capture all of it, but the primary thing was reefing out the rabbit seam, corking about three strands of oakum, and then we painted the oakum in. That just helps seal it up, making way to fill the rest of the seam with a mixture of tar, cement, and a little bit of glue. And that essentially is a flexible material that will fill the seam, uh, keep it waterproof, and then also be able to flex a little bit as the boat moves around. The other thing that we did today, which is more my skill set, was putting in Swede nails or trunnels, which stands for tree nails. That, that's a term that I learned today. These are just wooden nails that go into the holes of the previous fasteners. It's a little bit of Gorilla Glue, so all, all that does is put a piece of wood in with the Gorilla Glue that'll expand and fill the rest of the space. And then as the wood expands, it should create a watertight seal so that all the previous fasteners don't leak. The rest of this evening, I'm gonna put cement into the holes where the fasteners were laid. So I just want to reiterate that this has been a quick fix. On the port side, I need to redo all the planking. There's a lot of rotting wood, especially up front. Uh, the big haul that I did last year with Pete was about 40 planks and 20 frames on the aft two thirds of the starboard side. So up front here beneath the sheathing, this still needs attention. And then if I can find the means to do it, the entire port side needs to be replanked as well. Other thing that was done was to take a little bit of concrete mix to cover up the fastener holes. Concrete's really great because it prevents you know any water ingress but also if you're going to go do work to the fasteners or to the boat in the future you can use an awl and a hammer and chip out the concrete to gain access to the fastener it protects the fastener head so you can drill it back out to pull things like planks off without damaging the wood if you want to go ahead and put them back on in the future I'm trying to save some of the pieces of wood that we have that are worth keeping. Here's a cool old square nail. Uh, the boat's full of these fasteners. In the haul out last year, we took out about a thousand of these. Um, and they're in pretty good shape. Here's one in like almost a pristine condition coming out of the wood. Not sure exactly how old this is, but pretty neat that they're in such good condition. All right, so another good thing to do always when you're hauled out is to chase for leaks. In this case, we hauled with bilge water and we can see a little bit of leak here along the rabbit seam on the keel. And so I'm just gonna reef out what looks like some bad corking. So here we are, this used to be oakum corking. It's pretty stinky, it's just basically mud at this point. Another thing to do on a haul out is a routine check of all your through holes and if you remember from the toilet video that I posted, one of the valves was pretty sketchy and locked out, uh, which poses a danger for every reason you need to shut down a valve and it's not shutting or whatnot. You know, there's a big hole in your boat. So while I'm out of the water, I'm doing a quick change of a valve, which means pulling the whole toilet apart again. But now that I know how to do it, it's pretty easy. So here's an old valve, which was stuck and you can see all the calcification built up. Just bought a new valve, so it should be a quick fix. So what I'm doing now is pumping out the bilge water. I have an aft bilge and a forward bilge, and so to dry up the aft bilge, I'm using a hand pump that's gonna pump 
But right now, just water into the bucket. In order to dry up the garboard seam that we're gonna try corking later on this afternoon, the reason is you wanna keep a dry seam so that when you pack the oakum in, it doesn't begin soaking up water until it's completely taut. All right, day three update and hopefully our final day uh, because right now we're scheduled to go in before 8 a.m. tomorrow. Out late last night, uh, dry fitting um, the rest of the port side and most of the starboard side with all this sheathing that's going to go back on top. Uh, we've tried to reuse as much as the old sheathing as we can. It's iron bark, which is incredibly hard, watt resistant. Most of this wood might be 100 years old and it's still in pretty good shape, so putting as much of that back on. And then Eric brought some padunk, which is another hardwood to fill in the gaps of some of the sheathing that was a little bit too rotted or broken up or too short. For the pieces of iron bark sheathing that we couldn't reuse, Eric cut some new pieces made out of a different type of hardwood called paduk, and here I am just priming it ahead of putting bottom paint over the top. What's left is we're gonna tar everything underneath the sheathing, put the sheathing back in, and then we will start painting. Another task that I'm up to is helping Eric get ready to cork. What I'm doing is taking some cotton and rolling it so it's nice and tight. So when you go ahead and put it into the seam, you can put it in tight and make little bends to then take irons and jam it up tightly into the seam. Hi, my name's Eric. Uh, I'm a shipwright. I think I started working on wood boats in Apalachicola, Florida. Just being around boats, it's like they have they have a soul, so it's it's sculpture. In in BC, the I think the wooden boat scene has gotten quite derelict. So it's it's a lot of um, small repairs on a on a small community of enthusiasts. I've had a good experience over the last four or five years working with First Nations carvers, and that's a whole other uh, experience of how they they they. I've always constructed boats from components and their philosophy or their mentality was always carving it out of a solid. So to see them make shapes that are boatly shaped that are as true and fair as what we have here, um, but doing it in a reductive sculpture sense where they're using ads and uh, chainsaws and whatever else. Okay, so what we're doing here with corking, the nature and the property of wood is that it expands and contracts, especially with humidity in the water. So. The, the, the cotton and oakum, I and mean, we've put in a couple of different layers here. Um, cotton in the back, there's three layers, and I think we've got two of oakum on top that we've hand spun, is to form a barrier between uh, where the planking meets and where the planking, in this case, meets the, the center line, the backbone, the keel, um, to prevent water ingress. We have headlamps on, lights are out, down to the 11th hour and getting ready to paint, but I'm taping, he's sanding, and then hopefully we'll do a late evening first coat of paint, bottom paint tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. splash. It's just past 11 p.m. and I am now on my own. Boat's just about ready to go. I'm putting some bottom paint on. I still have to do some bungs, which I will chisel off after the bottom paint. And then 
If I have the energy, I'll probably put some sealer on the anchor guard. If not, that might be a project to do at anchor somewhere in the next week or so. It's a 4.30 wake up this morning to put a new gasket in the number six cylinder air start valve. Next, we are going to remove the bungs two hours till we go back in the water and I think we are good to go. back in the water just around 8.15 in the morning and then we're off our way down the river and up to Gambier Island. All right, so the boat's back in the water and typically for the next day or two after a haul out, when all the seams will dry up a little bit and the, the wood will shrink a little, you get a little bit of leaking across the boat, but underway, no leaking is coming through the bow. So the major concern and the purpose of the haul out has been fixed. Of course, they still need to bring attention to all those rotting planks in a future haul out. So stick with us because in the next couple weeks, I am going to be picking up some more crew and then I'll be meeting up with a really old and quite famous wooden sailing boat and their crew. And we'll be headed north for a few weeks to explore the coastline of British Columbia and enjoy some summer weather on the boat. See you next time.